Engineers Against Poverty (EAP) is a specialist NGO working in the field of engineering and international development. It was established in 1998 by the Royal Academy of Engineering and the Department for International Development (DFID). Topic EAP's program EAP's program is focused in three key areas: infrastructure, the extractive industries, oil, gas and mining, and engineering education. Individual projects within these areas are undertaken in collaboration with strategic partners. EAP's program is built on two propositions, whilst aid and debt relief are important, they are unlikely to offer sustainable solutions to poverty in the long term unless they are mobilized to accelerate pro-poor economic growth, promote enterprise development and create millions of decent jobs. Effective mobilization of the private sector represents one of the single greatest opportunities to step up the fight against poverty. Achieving this requires the alignment of the commercial interests of companies with the development priorities of poor people to deliver outcomes that are better for society and better for business. <laughs> Major initiatives Procurement <laughs> 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 research <laughs> EAP has been working in partnership with the Institution of Civil Engineers to demonstrate how procurement can be used to increase local content i.e. the proportion of goods, services and labor sourced locally in public sector infrastructure projects. Together they conducted extensive research that culminated in the publication of a report. A range of international agencies have made use of the knowledge contained in the report including the African Development Bank, OECD and the European Commission. In 2009–10 they will be developing systems to measure the impact of the improvements that we have been advocating. <laughs> Cost Secretariat EAP is part of the International Secretariat of the Construction Sector Transparency Initiative that is tackling the problem of corruption in the construction sector head-on. Launched by DFID in 2008 and coordinated by PricewaterhouseCoopers, COST is developing systems and procedures to enable the public disclosure of material project information. Improving transparency in this way will make it possible for decision makers to be held accountable. It will also help to reduce corruption and boost growth and development. Seven pilot countries, Tanzania, Botswana, Zambia, Ethiopia, Philippines, Vietnam and the UK, are participating in the pilot phase. EAP is providing policy and technical advice to cost and helping to ensure that a pro-poor perspective is integrated into decision making. Topic Health and Safety in Construction EAP has been working with the Institution of Engineers Tanzania to train a team of 35 Tanzanian men and women to international standards in construction health and safety and training delivery. They are also working with them to develop a training program that is specific to the Tanzanian context and which when finished, will be recognized as a new national standard. The Tanzanian trainers will be running courses with government, industry and trade unions throughout the country in 2009. Topic extractive Industries EAP have recently published innovative practical guidance to industry on maximizing local benefits of oil gas and mining projects, including an analysis of the opportunities for engineering services contractors to deliver local content in partnership with the Overseas Development Institute and a briefing note funded by the International Finance Corporation. They have also jointly released a guidance note with International Alert on conflict-sensitive business practice for engineering contractors, particularly those working in the extractive industries. <laughs> engineering education EAP has been working with the Institute of Education to explore the extent to which global issues are incorporated into the engineering curricula of UK universities. Their joint report captures the learning from a series of high-level roundtable meetings held in UK universities. It also makes a series of practical recommendations aimed at enabling UK universities to build on past success, overcome barriers and integrate the global dimension into teaching. They are now working in partnership with the Engineering Subject Centre, Engineering Council UK and the Institute of Education to provide practical support to seven UK-based universities. Over the next three years they will participate in a program of high-quality professional development and curriculum review support. <laughs> 